In this particular lecture, we are going to work with Kaggle's credit card fraud transaction dataset. The prediction task here is classifying fraudulent and non-fraudulent transactions. As usual, I have downloaded the dataset from Kaggle. I'm reading the CSV. Next thing is I'm splitting the data. Remember, we always split the data before doing anything with it. And here are the first few rows from our data. As we can see, we have 31 different columns. One of the columns is our target column, this class column, and all others are features. For confidentiality reasons, Kaggle has provided us only these transformed features with PCA. And these V1 to V28 features are these transformed features. These are not original features from credit card transactions. Now we don't know about PCA yet, and we will be learning about it in DACI 563. Now let's look at how many examples we have. We have around 200,000 total examples. Let's carry out very preliminary EDA. Let's call info on our train DF. As we can see here, all our features are numeric features. We do not have any categorical features here. Let's call describe on our train DF. And here are our results. As we can see, we do not have any missing values in our data. And as I said before, all our features are numeric features here. We do not have categorical features. Now, other than these V1 to V28 features, we have time feature and we have this amount feature. Now for amount feature, we can apply scaling, but for time feature, it doesn't make much sense. That said, in this lecture, we are going to apply scaling on all features and you will learn more about how to deal properly with these kinds of features, these time kind of features uh, in the next semester in your time series course. Okay, so to summarize, basically we are only going to apply scaling. We don't really need any other transformations here. Let's separate X and Y. Now here I'm creating X train big, Y train big, and X test and Y test. Now, why I'm creating X train big and Y train big? In 571, we have been using cross validation whenever possible. We didn't really work with a single validation set. But for this lecture, for demonstration purpose of these evaluation matrix, I'm going to use a single validation set. How can we create this single validation set? We can call train test split on our X train big and Y train big. So when I do that, I have now X train and Y train. I have X valid and Y valid, and I have X test and Y test. Now again, uh, we have been carrying out cross validation and I told you in 571 that having a single validation set is not a great idea. But in this particular lecture, we are going to use it for demonstration purpose. And also in this particular case, our data is big enough. We have 200,000 examples. So it's not going to be a huge problem. Okay, now let's run our dummy classifier. Let's see what kind of baseline results we get. As usual, I'm defining our dummy classifier with most frequent strategy. And here are our mean cross-validation results. Now, what do we see here? Aren't you surprised here? So dummy classifier is getting 0 0.998 validation accuracy. It's performing almost perfectly on this data set. So should we be happy with this accuracy and deploy a dummy classifier model for fraud detection? Let's look at this. Now, what is the class distribution? 
if we call value counts on our train df of class then we see that 99.83 percent of our transactions are non-fraud transactions and only 0.17 percent of the transactions are fraud transactions so we have many many non-fraudulent transactions and only a handful of fraud transactions and this makes sense right if you think of tra bank transactions then there are going to be many many non-fraudulent transactions and only a few fraudulent transactions when you are in such a situation you have class imbalance. The question now is, should we just say that, okay, this is a good accuracy and deploy this model? Now, if you think about what dummy classifier does with our uh, most frequent strategy, it's going to predict non-fraudulent in all cases because that's the most frequent class. And so it's never going to predict any transaction as a fraudulent transaction. Now that's a problem, right? Because banks are more interested in finding these fraudulent transactions. If there are fraudulent transactions, they don't want the, the classifier to miss these transactions. So this 99.83 accuracy is kind of misleading here. Now let's try logistic regression on this problem. Remember, we only have numeric features. So I'm creating a pipeline with standard scalar as the first step and logistic regression as the second step. I'm carrying out cross-validation with this pipeline. And here are our results. Our validation score, our mean cross-validation score is 0.9991. So our accuracy is a little bit better now compared to dummy classifier. With dummy classifier, the accuracy was 99.83% and now it's 99.91%. That said, what score should be considered acceptable here? Are we actually spotting any fraud transactions? Because we are interested in spotting these fraud transactions, and are we really doing that? When we call score in scikit-learn, by default, it returns accuracy. What is accuracy? Accuracy is correct predictions over total examples. And these correct predictions also include non-fraudulent transactions in our case. So the question is, for these kinds of problems, is accuracy a good metric? Is there anything more informative than accuracy that can be used here? In this lecture, we are going to look at this issue.